Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTracker.com, and today we're gonna do a product review on the Bell SRT helmet. The Bell SRT retails for $209.95 as of the time we're shooting this video. Please understand we don't update videos for price changes, only if the product itself has been completely redesigned. Before we dive into the review, I just want to share a couple thoughts. I like what Bell did here, coming out with an affordable fiberglass shell helmet that has a pretty close resemblance to the upper model, the Bell Star and the Bell Ray Star. This is the Star MIPS that I have here on the left. You can clearly see how similar they are to one another. From vent placement to exterior shape, they are very close. Certainly you can see the differences, and you should be able to, as there's a pretty serious price difference between the two. This one's a little sleeker, a little sexier, right? A little more aerodynamic than the SRT but that comes at more than double the price. Who is this helmet right for? If you're shopping in the $200 price point and you're looking for a quality helmet that is Snell certified, Snell 2015 to be specific, has a strong ventilation package and a comfortable fit, this is a solid option for street riders. If you're a track rider and what your budget allows for is this $200 price point, I would be comfortable on the racetrack in this helmet if I was shopping in the same price point. I already said it, Snell 2015 certified. This helmet weighed 3.5 pounds in a medium on our digital shipping scale, which is on par with what we see from all the quality fiberglass Snell certified helmets. It is glasses compatible. It offers an intermediate oval head shape. I measure 58 centimeters right on the money intermediate oval head shape. I fit really well into most medium intermediate oval helmets that are on the market today. I got a good comfortable fit from this. It has a reasonable on off effort which means it's not too difficult to get on and pull back off. You don't feel a lot of discomfort in the ears but it fits tight enough that it seals up well. The ventilation felt strong, right? The road noise for a $200 helmet was really in check. One of the strengths of the SRT is going to be its ventilation system. We have an intake vent down here in the chin area. Nice solid action, large intakes. Those flow into the breath deflector here. You can see the channels, then divert it right up onto the shield. Large intake vents here, and we'll take the helmet apart in a little while and we'll show you the holes on the other side in the EPS that line up with the vents. Large intake vent right there in the brow. That is in the sweet spot. Catches a ton of air. Another intake vent here on the top. These are both switchable like we saw on the chin vent. And they have a nice solid action. They feel quality. Exhaust vent is managed through these large exhausts right here in the back of the shell. It uses the Bell Panavision shield, right? It's fog-free treated optically correct. This is the same shield that we're seeing Bell use on the Star MIPS as well as the Ray Star helmet. I've ridden quite a bit in these shields. They are excellent. This also opens the door for you if you want to upgrade to the Bell Pro Tint, which is the self-tinning shield you can install on this. goes from light to dark. It does come at a price which is pretty darn close to the purchase price of the helmet, but at the end of the day if that's something you want to invest in, this helmet will accept that. They use a three different shell sizes on this helmet. Extra small and small is the first shell size. Medium and large share the second cell size. Extra large and 2X are going to share the third and final shell size. The liner is removable, washable, and replaceable, including the chin curtain that comes pre-installed on the helmet. You'll also note there are two reflective pieces right here at the back of the cheek pads. The material they use for a $200 helmet, I'd say it's comfortable, it's quality, it's moisture wicking stuff. It is a good value at this given price point. The aerodynamic performance of this helmet, while it's not on par with say the Star or the Ray Star, some of the higher end helmets out there, due to its round shape, it is smooth in the wind. And like I said, it is relatively quiet, especially given its level of ventilation. Okay, now let's give you a close-up look 
at the shield system and the shield swap. This, like I said, is using their Panavision shield. It has a nice centrally located lock, which I really love to see on helmets. That is so much more effective than one that's located on the size. It's got a large tab on it that it's easy to grab a hold of to open and close and lock in position. One of the easiest on the market to change as well. Raise the shield all the way to the upward most position, push in here on the button in the center, and literally pull forward. It is that easy. If I was gonna give you any knock on this shield system, it's the fact that there are no detents. For me, that's not an issue. I either have my shield all the way up or all the way down in the locked position. There are some riders out there that do like to ride around in a crack shield. If you like to have a shield crack while you're riding, this is definitely not the helmet for you. To reinstall, you wanna locate this disc here in the center and push back. You're gonna hear an audible click letting you know it's locked into position. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Always before you go out on a test ride, you wanna operate it a couple of times just to make sure you've got it all locked in and it's gonna stay in place. Now we're ready to disassemble the helmet and give you a close look from the inside out. While I'm doing that, while I'm tearing this thing apart, I just wanna say I think this helmet provides a lot of value, okay? Certainly it's a level of performance, it's not gonna be a, on par all the way with the race star or the star helmet but it's a good quality performance helmet at a very reasonable price chin curtain grab it right here by the fabric and just kind of work it around like so give you a look at the material they use there i like the quality that i see there it's a good size chin curtain to remove the cheek pads you want to get your fingers in between the eps and the back of the cheek pad itself, you're gonna feel the first snap up here. Release that, there's one at the top. I'll show you these once we remove it. From there, there's some Velcro towards the rear. Release that, I'll grab it like so. Give it a gentle tug. There are the two snaps. There is a little patch of Velcro. Give you a look at the quality of the cheek pad, the fabric itself. This is, of course, communicator compatible. We'll show you the pockets that are molded into it here in just a second. Remove the second cheek pad. If you need to tune the fit of the helmet, you are able to install any size cheek pad into this. Mirror image of the other side. To remove the top pad, Get an index finger or a thumb in between the EPS and the back of the top pad. You'll find the snap right in this area. It's kind of tight. Two snaps in the back. Then come to the front. You want to grab the fabric here. Kind of put some pressure underneath it. And remove the top pad. Give you a close look at that. I like the quality here. <laughs> One thing that Bell does do, these tags are really big. And when you have these installed, you have a top pad in the helmet, what you need to watch is the position of the tag. I'm going to show you why here in a second. Because it's going to have an impact on ventilation. Can you get in there, Caleb? Can you see where that tag is? We'll pull the top pad out. And if you notice, that tag will actually cover up the hole in the EPS towards the rear of the helmet on the right side, and that is not going to have a positive effect on your ventilation. So when you get your SRT, you verify that it fits good, you're ready to take it out and ride in it, make sure that you have that folded over so it's in between the top pad and the internal portion of the EPS. <coughs> you could cut it off, if you cut it off, you've got a date code that's here on the liner. That's not really a huge deal because there will be date codes internally inside the helmet as well. Okay, you can see that there's stickers that are right inside here that also show the build date. So that's really a personal choice what you want to do with that. Because at the end of the day, having the tag up in there, even between the EPS and the liner, there are some channels that are in the liner that is going to have a very minor influence on the airflow management inside the helmet. Not a big deal if it's folded over like that. Is a big deal if it's folded over in that direction. 
speaker pockets, if you're going to be using, can you see that, Caleb? Those are really deep. If you're going to be installing a, a Bluetooth communicator device, the pockets are plenty deep. They're going to work with any of the current universal Bluetooth devices that are available out there, right? Easy install on this helmet. Uh, another thing, you know, if I'm going to knock it a little bit like I did with a tag here, I love the double D-ring retention system. That's great. This metal snap, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me. I mean, it snaps fine. It stays in place. That's great. I guess I just don't really like the look of it. I think I like the look of the plastic stuff better or the magnetic strap retainer. I understand why they didn't put the magnetic strap retainer on the price point helmet because you need to do things to separate it from the upper end. But in the, in the end, that's just something that I kind of noticed and maybe I didn't love. Those are two very minor things. End of the day, this is still an excellent value. At just barely over $200, right, this is one of the best options in that price point, in my opinion.